Hi, um, the topic today is friends uh, with benefits, no strings attached. I'm Lila White from Singapore. I created this uh, platform, Life by Lila, to talk about things that happens in my life and similar things that would uh, happen in yours. I hope you will enjoy this show. And if you do, please share the link and also uh, comments. And I'll try to raise up your questions or comments by the end of the show. Keep it coming, guys. And also you can find me on um, Life by Lila Facebook page. And my email is lifebylila at gmail.com. I'll put it up later. So I am so privileged to have two ladies who are hilarious, uh, witty, and funny, and beautiful. I have Sharon Lim. I'm going to have her on first. And uh, Jo Potter will follow up soon. She's changing to a different outfit. So, um, Sharon, <laughs> welcome to you again. Hi. Hello. It's <clears throat> Hang on a second, uh, Sharon. It's good yeah. to, to, yeah, here we are. Now I see you. Please introduce yourself again. Sharon is a very popular uh, lady that is on this show and always willing to come on the show. Right. <laughs> I didn't know oh, that. Oh, no, Sharon, before you, you do anything, I want you to say hi to a big fan of yours in, in Beirut. His name is Pierre. So please say hi to Pierre. Hello, I'm Pierre how are you? <laughs> he's, he's an honest fan. So please introduce uh, yourself, Sharon. Okay, I'm. My name is Sharon Lim. I am. I well, I was the former editor in chief of El Singapore, which is a fashion magazine. Uh, currently, I am an educator, and I also do content strategy for a comms agency. So it keeps me busy. I talk to millennials. <laughs> um, I, I'm still in touch with. Uh, my old life in, in many ways. Uh, and I'm enjoying a new chapter because I just turned 50 this year. Congratulations. How Thank wonderful you. is that? I know, right? Um, <laughs> yes. It's better better getting older and wiser, hopefully instead of being dead. That's my philosophy. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I, we've had this conversation. I actually feel much more attractive now than I've ever felt in my entire life. And it should be that way because we are yeah. so confident in ourselves. Now yeah. We know who we are. Okay, um, that's yeah. another subject. Uh, I'm going to bring up <laughs> Joe Potter. Uh, Joe uh, was uh, a guest of mine uh, two weeks ago and also very beautiful, funny, and a very uh, articulate. Uh, Joe, Joe, please introduce yourself and give us a little bit of your background. Okay, hi, my name is Joe Potter and I am a professional singer and songwriter. Um, I've written and produced two albums, both on iTunes, Spotify, um, Rhapsody, uh, Amazon, pretty much everywhere you want to look, I'll be there. So just Google me and buy my album, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> little shameless promotion, never hurt anybody, especially me. And um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be back, Lana. No, no, it's wonderful. Both of you are very articulate and very strong-minded people and i'm so so honored and I, I wish to be as eloquent as you guys are oh and I'm it's sure you certainly are <laughs> no, 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 really, but thank you so much uh, so let's let's get to business um the, this expression uh, friends with benefits uh, i want to ask um sharon first what does that mean i mean i'm really intrigued by friends with benefits isn't friends with benefits um the g-rated version of fuck buddies <laughs> just call it like it is people mm. yeah um but it's a great area isn't it for for a lot of us both men and women right, uh, because right. uh we are wired differently to to begin with uh and i realized that at the grand old age of 50 that um what it used to be before uh was very much driven by by biology of course just like just like the men i've met uh, but now that I'm 50, I have some perspective, I like to think, on on the whole, you know, gnarly bits of, of uh, the friends with benefit gray, gray area. It's 50 shades of gray, really, isn't it? If you want to call it that, because uh, I think men are, men are just wired to, to, you know, spawn and, you know, sow their seed as much as possible, whereas women uh, tend not to. But the problem is, I, and I realized in my 40s that my libido is ramping up. <laughs> and seriously, I'm single. And I, I'm not in a committed relationship of any sort. So friends with benefits are, are really handy to have around. Right, right, right. So, so how does this friends with benefits start? I mean, they are actual friends. And oh, I mean, I, I, 
I'm not uh, that naive, but I just want to understand what what is the how does friends with benefits. I think there are different different ways of defining friends with benefits, and and that's where that's where the trouble really comes in because the moment you you start to uh, change the definition, uh, that's that's and you, you change your expectations as a result, then uh, it. It becomes it can become potentially quite complicated if one party um, it, it can be the man it can be the woman it really doesn't matter um, uh, decides to have more than uh, sexual feelings for for the for the friend with benefits but technically speaking friends with benefits are just that they're friends uh, whom you can have sex with uh, however uh, they're different from a hookup a hookup is um, very often to me, and this is just my definition, uh, a one-night deal or a very short deal, short-term deal, a friend with benefits arrangement can go on indefinitely as long as um, you're mutually, you mutually uh, agree to a, a set of uh, rules. You know, like uh, the Big Bang Theory, uh, Sheldon has the, 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 the roommate agreement, the roommate contract. I, I believe, I believe in, in spelling out as clearly as possible what uh, needs to be done and what is expected, what's not expected. Of course, you know, in real life, is is complicated. Right, of course. Everything is complicated in real life. It sounds so good. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah, all sweaty and icky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so Joe, um, what's your definition of uh, friends with benefits? Um, I think it's it's really similar. Um, you know, it's it's basically... Somebody that you are a friend with, that you can have sexual experience with, with, and there's still a certain amount of respect that goes along with like a certain care or treatment of that person, and that you can still you still maybe want to hang out with them or want to be around them um, and spend time with them, but really not have any kind of commitment. Um, you know, not be able like be in an open relationship with somebody, but without any without it progressing to stronger emotions. Um, yeah, it's 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 more like that. It's just I, I think a lot of it is defined by the the friendship itself, and then that limbo state of you know taking it to a physical place and not taking it to an emotional place. Okay, but but who initiate? I mean, mostly is it initiated by men? Uh, do women initiate it too? Because I think we are built differently, whether we like it or not. Um, um, I, I know. Yeah. That. I would say that it's on both sides. I mean, it just depends on where each other is at with each other. Like, um, I mean, I can give very specific examples. Um, and I want to come back to what, you know, was said earlier about like sort of hooking up. Hookup is just, just straight up sex. Like I'm just gonna, and it's not even a one night stand. It, it could be, but it, a lot of time hooking up is just like, you know, I'm just going to call that person for sex and we're not having any conversations. We're just going to go at it and like, you can leave afterwards. Um, the booty what? A booty call? Is that yeah, what it's called? Yeah, 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 that's hooking up. Like, you're going to hook up and, like, there's nothing to it, right? There's no, it's all just sexual. Where, like, you know, again, friend with benefits is a little bit more, the, the person that initiates it, a lot of it depends on how it evolves. So, like, if it's, you could have a guy that um, you're dating and, you like him a lot, but it's just, you know, it's not going to go anywhere and you decide that it's just going to be sort of like, we're just going to be friends. It could be that you were, you knew each other for a really long time. You got drunk, something happened and, you know, and then, you know, it, it was fun and you wanted to continue the fun, but you don't want to miss the friendship. Um, it can be initiated on either side, but I think what's really important is that like that it's, it's stated up front about like where you're at with it and, and defining that border. So that could easily be either or. It could easily be a guy saying, hey, I'm not interested in the commitment. You know, we can have some fun. Um, or the girl going, hey, I'm not, I'm not in that space. You know, so, but yeah, I think, I think it can be initiated on either side. Um, I, I'm just trying to, try, trying to figure out how do you, how do you, so basically it's not worse, it's how you react to each other also, right? I mean, you, you drop off hints of, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't, never had friends with benefits. I just have friends, the benefit part is like, oh, my friend has an island, so let's all go. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask 
ask um, uh, Sharon, so are there any secrets to a successful uh, friends with benefits arrangement? What's the secret? Mm, friends with a successful friends with benefits situation? Uh, really, is a, this is so girly of me to say, but it really is about commit. It's about communication. You like I said, like I said earlier, and, and like what what Joe has said as well. You need to stay upfront, and and the terms of engagement, if you want to call it that, uh, can can change over time. But you just need to be really clear, and you you can be. I can be friends, you know, with someone. You know, I can. I can you know have sex with him, but it doesn't mean I want to commit. It's different from dating. It's different from a relationship, where where you have all the all the emotional uh, stuff that comes with it. A friend, it's a friend with benefits situation. Is as far as I'm concerned, uh, just a friend uh, who I can have sex with. Okay, and I'm very clear so about that. So is it safe it's to say? It's taken me a while. It's taken me a long time to actually to actually come to this state of mind because uh, I think women are are socialized and raised and and like I said, you know, hardwired to to think about sex differently from from men to approach sex differently than men. You see, so we are at, at this stage in in um, the human race's development where I think uh, the availability of of uh, sex to address our biological urges uh, is is uh, greater than ever. And but women haven't actually been able to to exercise choice uh, until perhaps a century ago. So we're st- it's still really in the early stages of 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 I think women as as fully realized equal beings. And you know I'm not going to bring feminism into this. I'm not going to bring the Harvey Weinstein uh, the Harvey Weinstein saga into this because that's a separate issue altogether. But I was just reading about it this morning and and we and I was thinking about the, the topic we're going to discuss today and. Um, it's all part of, of, of it's part of the fallout for me as uh, of the sexual revolution which started in the sixties. So, so um, very deep, right? Very deep, right? I know you always so deep, that very difficult for me. <laughs> no, but maybe, maybe this this conversation will start another revolution, yeah, of women realizing that you know times are changing and we do have uh, needs. We, we also have the right to to lead our own life the way we're supposed to. Um, uh, hopefully, mm-hmm. this is the message that we're sending out. Um, so, in another word, are we actually saying it's um, but to the guy? Uh, you are uh, good enough to lay with, but not good enough to be with. Is that what we're saying, Sharon? Um, I think we are probably d- at different stages in our lives, and okay. possibly you may. I mean, how many of us have met a smoking hot guy who you know you? Are really attracted to and is mutual, but you know that it's not going to last. But you could be friends, so why not enjoy it for what it is? Okay, fair enough. So, Joe, what do you think of that? Is that is that what you what we asked the telling the guys now, or the guys telling us good enough, good enough to lay with, but not good enough to be with? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, so I think that, uh, well, I want to sort of follow up what Sharon was saying about, like, sort of the sexual revolution, and I think we're progressing in such an amazing and very fast manner, and if we weren't, there would be no Tinder. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, there wouldn't be these apps that, you know, that, like, sort of, because it takes two to tango and 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 also be popular. Um, so I think that that, and I think that also, it's not necessarily you're not good enough to be with. It's just sometimes like I'm not in the right headspace to have a relationship or I'm too busy. I've got, I've got, you know, women's roles and men's roles have changed so much that, you know, like we're, you know, we, we're independent and we have careers to keep in mind and we don't, our whole focus is not a guy and not the relationship. We have other bigger dreams of, and aspirations for ourselves. And, and that means that, you know, putting a guy in a relationship first is not the, the case anymore, but we still have those physical needs. So it's like, well, you know what, I'm going to go out and satisfy those physical needs, but I'm still going to retain my own independence and my own sort of goals and dreams about the things I want to do. And, and that those goals and dreams for some women, it can be the, yes, I want to be in a relationship. And for some women it can be, that's an afterthought to all of the other things I want to accomplish in my life. So I've also um, had, had uh, people telling me that, 
you know, you women, uh, mostly men, um, you women always wanted uh, uh, to want men to change, to be better, uh, you know, um, better, better human being, not to do this, not to do that. But you guys also have changed to be the worst version of men. What are your thoughts on that? The what version of men? Worst version of men. So we have become worst version of the men that we hate. I don't agree with that. I, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't believe that women um, by nature or by nurture um, pull some of the shit men do. <laughs> okay, sometimes we do, all right? <laughs> but like, um, I think that, and maybe that's also like a, an age thing or it comes with age that you just don't, um, you know, there are certain characteristics I think from an immaturity level that you, you do because you don't know how to handle the situation properly. Um, and you end up doing some things, but I think that's a very broad generalization to make about, you know, how women are, are starting to, to become the worst part of men, unless men are just starting to feel trivialized as they've done to women over the many, many years. I, I, I think, I, think I, is. I think I agree to, to what you say is, um, they are seeing that, um, we are showing the other side. We are showing who, what we can be. Uh, without trying to outdo them, you know, um, this is what we are. We have become very independent. We have a voice now. So they didn't like, most of them don't like what they see. So that's, that's why the remarks uh, like that, that I, I hear a lot from most men that I know. Yeah, but here's the thing. I mean, like, and, and now this is sort of a cultural thing. I have to sort of share that, um, you know, I grew up in America, and when we were growing up, we had a lot of what they call PSAs, which are public service announcements, um, that were in cartoons and geared towards children, uh, specifically girls, uh, that you, know, you can be whatever you want to be. You want to be the president, you want to be whatever, you can be whatever you want to be. And um, I think that that proliferates into our own mindsets about how we want to grow up and the dreams that we want to have. And and maybe, you know, as, as girls in the... 50s and 60s dreamt of being housewives and having children you know these days you know we dream about being doctors and dream about being leaders of the world like you know and and that doesn't getting to those dreams and those accomplishments doesn't always have a, a love interest as our main focus um sharon what do you think do you even know what I was talking about, Sharon? <laughs> Sharon? Yeah, so, yeah. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, I agree with, with Joe um, that we have, women today have, have much, uh, have a lot going for them. But, as I've said again, I go back to, to uh, socialization, I go back to nurture in, in a way which is different from what, what Joe was saying in, in that uh, we, we still, I think we still are bound by quite a lot of conventional thinking, um, in, particular, in particular in Asia. Um, and I mean, look at me, I'm 50, I'm single, you know, and half the world thinks I'm gay, the other half thinks I'm straight but don't know where I'm at, you know, and really it's none of your fucking business. <laughs> <laughs> However, here I am, and if I'm looking for a fur buddy, will I be judged? Probably less than than maybe 10, 15 years ago. And we have a popular culture, as Joe said, to thank for it. I mean, in the 1990s, Sex and the City uh, was revolutionary for, for women's, uh, as a voice for women, uh, modern women in living in the city. Um, Samantha, the, 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 the cougar, the the sex machine, you know, I mean, she was, she was one of the stock characters in, in a sitcom with four stock characters, four archetypes of women, right? The repressed, uh, the repressed uh, girl, the religious girl who was looking for her husband, the free spirit who was still also looking for Mr. Big, and then there was the sexual predator. It was, but that opened up, I think, uh, a lot of discussion and opened minds to the possibilities uh, that women can can be more than than what uh, we were going through at that time, and and uh, to me, certainly, uh, Sex in the City was was a profound influence um, as as a young writer at at that time working in Elle magazine. 
um, exploring um, the idea of, of sexuality, of of what women want, and what uh, what women should be, which which is actually quite, which is another can of worms altogether, uh, and why shouldn't we be who we are? And that yeah. includes embracing your sexuality and in some way thinking like a man because one of the biggest things about sex in the city was to have sex like a man, right? To have sex, no holes barred, no, no commitment, no personal feelings, it's just a bang. But I think, I think sex is far more than that. Sex is complex, sex is icky, sex is skin on skin, it's really intimate. And, and, but sex is also joyous, isn't it? Absolutely. With the right person. I think I, with the right person. But true. But I think you define sex uh, eloquently. I think that that's that's absolutely correct the way you define sex. So, but 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 you know, for me, um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm still trying to understand it. Um, how because we are emotional creatures, also, um, and jealous, and you know, full of emotions. Um, how does that work? You know, sometimes when you whether it's buddies or friends with benefit or no strings attached, you know, you get to know that person. I know it's it's very easy to say we have rules and regulation and, you know, we follow, but then feelings get into emotions get into How does that work? Are you willing to risk um, your friendship over over this? Um, that's a big risk to take. I'm not, I'm not just speaking from, from women's side, men's side too. Um, mm-hmm. I know I'm talking about... I... Okay, I, I have no illusions about about that. I mean, I it's really odd, but I never had. So if if it's a situation where you're you're felt buddy or you're dating, you know, then that it is what it is for, for that time. You know, I'm I don't think I'm I'm representative in a lot of ways of uh of, of women, uh the, the conventional woman. For me it really and and I, I understand how other women feel and I think it's it's because Again, it goes back to heart wiring. Goes back to, to biological urges to settle down to have a mate. Um, I just always knew at the back of my head, you know, that this person isn't ex- actually the right one for the long term. Is the right one for now, and I'm quite good at compartmentalizing. I think, I think the, the trick, for from women is is to just be very clear. And the moment the, the equilibrium, uh, is is shaken in any way then you got to have a talk with yourself first, like it or not. And, and have the courage to address it um, on, as, as clearly as possible. I, I'm, I'm big on communication. and I'm, I can't say I'm the best communicator. I, I try very hard. Um, but sometimes, you know, yeah, I feel, I, especially when you're cuddling, it's like, oh, he's so nice. He's, he's lovely, you know. And then what happens, right? And then, then you just kind of write the feeling and then, Sooner or later, the coffee will, you know, you wake up and smell the coffee, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I, I think... Wow. <laughs> so, so Joe, um, what's your input in this? I just, I just, I, I, I this is a very interesting uh, subject. Uh, so, as far as jealousy is concerned, I think it just depends on how deeply you feel for that person and how good the sex is. <laughs> If, if you have very intense feelings and the sex is okay, good, like, then you're going to get jealous. And a, a lot of it's more of that feeling. And also, like, if maybe you don't like that person as much, but you have that, like, amazing chemistry between you two, and then he goes off and showers out with somebody else, you're like, hey, 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 that was for me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. You can go off and do whatever you want. And, just don't, or, and it's also, like, that level of respect. Like, you don't want to see that. You don't want to, like, you know, like... It depends on again how you feel or, or where it is, but you, I think you just don't want to see. Um, you know, if you're hooking up with some guy that you know, I'm uh, hooking up. If you're if you're friends with benefits, and then he starts to post like all these pictures of, of other girls and 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 Andy's hooking up with you, and I like, like that's just like not nice, right? Like that's just disrespectful. I think to all women, um, you know, because he's just trying to put himself out there as like you know, he's validating himself through the women that he's, he's sleeping with. Um, and that's like, that's his own shit, right? Like, so, but I think that when it comes to, you know, you were talking about jealousy, um, you know, Sharon's spot on, you really have to 
address that. If you want to continue to be friends, you have to address that right, right up front, right away, and either stop that, you know, that benefit or, right. you know, or decide that you're going to take the next step. But it's, it, you really have to communicate that really, you know, or like just make sure that he doesn't do that action that makes you feel that way. It's, you know, but you have to make it really clear. So I guess it works both ways, uh, right? So for, for, for men, we'll say the same thing to women. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, like there's been, I've, I've had situations like that where uh, I've been involved with somebody, you know, we were friends. And, and then there's also like sort of like these ulti, like this ultimate, um, well, like a, this uh, alternative motive, right? Where he, like you go, look, I'm really not in that headspace. I'm not interested in having a relationship. And, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, me neither. And you end up sort of like having being attracted. And, and then he continues to pursue you in hopes that you're going to break down and have that relationship with him. And you're just like, no, I'm sorry. Like, that's not where it's at. Like, it goes both ways. Girls do it. Guys do it. Uh, you know, it's not exclusive to gender. But, but uh, have you heard of stories where, um, uh, because I, I, I've never heard of, of stories where I've heard of friends with benefits, but yeah. where people actually, after a long time, they fell for each other and uh, they actually ended up with a relationship. Yeah, I, mean, that, I, I have never heard of, no, I haven't. I, I mean, like, I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I think that's friends that maybe hooked up or got you know, had like some friends with benefit relationship and then they transpired into that but the, the the big part of that is friends they were friends to begin with and then it developed into a relationship or you know like they were friends and it they were having fun and and somewhere down the line they they realized that they wanted just to be with each other like it's i i can see that happening um i don't think it's it's never happened um yeah i, I can definitely see it happening but to, i think that's the the exception to the norm. I don't think that's actually the case. Okay, so, so I need you to define something because I'm a bit uh, clogged up in my head. So friends with benefit, okay? So friends with benefit are people that, define this for me, um, people that you know who are friends. Like for example, I'm friends with Mamat, okay? So I've been friends with Mamat for a long, long time and then suddenly, you know, I have these urges and Mamat understands and we hook, we hook up, whatever that right. is. Yeah, we a new relationship, uh, like emotional relationship, but just for uh, sex, right? Or uh, friends with benefits is somebody that you know in a group. I meet you in a party, and then um, uh, we get along, and then we sleep with each other, and that's it. And next time, if you know, I feel the urge, I call you, and like a booty call. So what? What is? I mean, which one okay. is friends? The first one is more friends with benefits. The second one is I meet you at a party. I, we hook up that night. It's good. It's fun. I call you to come over and have sex. That's just a hookup. Um, that can, let me make that really clear. That can also translate into friends. Like maybe, you, you know, the, like you sort of uh, start to hang out with each other or their groups more often. Usually not. But I'm not going to dispel that that could never happen. So like, or discount that couldn't happen. But I think that like when you, when you, um, it's fr friends with benefits is more a de definition of the first scenario. The second scenario is, is, you know, just like, uh, yeah, is a, is a booty call. Okay. Thank you. I mean, and, and like now I know what means. Um, uh, Sharon, any, any input to, uh, anything to add to, to the definition of friends with benefit? I learned so much today. Um, Joe is spot on, you know, um, and a hookup could turn into a friendship, you know, it's, it's, it's not unheard of, but um, usually it's, it's someone you, you know, you know, through mutual friends or, or whatever, you know, you've known each other for a while and you get on, you know, you're in the same hit, hit space in, in terms of some mutual interests, which always helps, you know, um, and then you decide, oh, okay, you know. Yeah, urges and and the rest will follow, right? Um, the other thing that I wanted to wanted to bring up was was the is the concept of respect, because I think it, when in friends with in a friends with benefits situation, there's potentially a more mutual respect to begin with, than in a hookup, 
uh, I'm not saying this is right, is definitive, of course, no, but uh, in a hookup, I've, I've had girlfriends who say, oh my god, this guy is such an ass, you know, he only calls me for sex and he wants it now and, you know, he wants, he wants to get a blowjob in the car and, you know, I, I'm not satisfied and he kicks me out. I mean, seriously, girl, what's wrong with you? You know, just, just claim your right, you know, <laughs> pleasure, claim your pleasure, man, you know, <laughs> and, and yeah, it just really gets me, it really gets me annoyed, you know, but in, in a friend with benefits situation, um, I go back to that. There is, there are times when you go oh my, oh my God, I just need, I need it now, you know, and it, it becomes a hookup, but they're still friends. There's still respect at the end of the day. Right. Great. Okay. And I, I understand. And I, I, t- I totally understand. I, I get it. So, but are there, like, for example, the rules and regulation before you start with uh, benefits uh, relationship? One is respect. You have to respect. You have to really understand uh, and have a conversation so you don't cross that line. And if you do, you yeah. know, it's respect and then conversation. Um, also, honesty. You have to be very honest, right? Well, as clear as possible. Cl- clarity. Not so much honesty. Because being honest would mean something like, you know, oh, I don't like it when, you know, you don't shower. I mean, you know, that's that's really honest, you know. <laughs> clarity. <laughs> it's yeah, probably what yeah. I'm driving at. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's bring Joe up too. Because uh, this is, um, this are the rules and regulation before you start friends with benefits um, uh, relationship. So clear, clarity, uh, ground rules, um, uh, what else? Um, yeah, I think, I, I, I think there's really just, like I said, the respect, but there's also the caring. Like, and, and, and caring and respect are a little bit different. And like, I, I care enough about you to, to give you that respect, to make sure that I'm going to like nurture that friendship, to make sure nobody gets hurt along the way, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna respect the fact I'm not gonna call you at two in the morning for a, a hookup unless you want me to, or you know, like you, you sort of it's it's that like what Sharon's saying. You have to define that and make it really really clear. Um, I would take it a step farther, and I would say that you you gotta be honest in that. I mean, like on it, like I laugh because like there's certain honesties that you don't want to have, but if you really want to have a really good sort of like experience, then then honesty is required. Like you know. Yeah, go take a shower. Like, okay. <laughs> please go take a shower. You have to say that, and I don't want to have that benefit. I'm sorry. It really put me off. Or like, or, or like, don't take a shower at my house. Go to your own house, take a shower, and then come over. Like, like <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. So also, um, gifts, right? Somebody asked me... Um, so if you are friends with benefit, um, you have to establish no gift. Um, you know, um, I don't. I don't know. You think so? No gift. No present. No okay. sleepovers. No, no sleepovers. No, I don't agree with that at all. Like, there's nothing wrong with having morning sex with some guy that you have friends with benefits. Like, what the, is it, it, unless that's like your way of not getting involved emotionally because you know that when you have a guy sleep over that you're going to get involved with them on that capacity, then, you know, then you're setting your own borders and I appreciate that. But like, you know, like if, if you can handle that on an emotional level and still get the benefit of everything that you want, why not? But I feel like also people do not want them to sleep over because they don't want their, their sheets dirty. <laughs> You're going to get the sheets dirty anyway if he's over your house sleeping in your bed. I don't know what you're talking about. You're going to change your sheets. Are you going to sleep in those same sheets? Are you serious? Come on. Oh, my God. Who are, to? Who are these people you're talking to? With them in Singapore, do they not have helpers to change the beds? Or- Sharon, what do you think? Yes. Dirty sheets? Oh, I, what do I think of dirty sheets? Um, no, not negotiable. Sleep over. Um, gifts. Those are the um, brown... Whatever, whatever rocks a boat, right? As, as Joe said, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with money sex. If, if that's what you like, sure. If that's what makes you feel all cuddly and, and squishy and, you know, starting to develop relationship-like feelings, 
then don't do it. You know, I think I think we need just need to be aware of of what rocks our collective boats, right? <laughs> our mutual boats. Um, and honestly, sleeping over is not that big a deal unless he's got you know really bad hygiene you know, in in his home. You know, yeah. Right. So it's fine. So is, it, so is it a secret? Like if you have friends with benefit, if you have other friends. Uh, it's one of the rules not to tell your other friends about him. You know what? Word's gonna get out anyway, like it or not. Um, you don't have to advertise the fact. I think you know, because it's it's your private life, and it's it's like you know when you're dating someone, you know, you're just like dating someone new. Do you tell all your girlfriends about who this person is? Yeah, of course you do. But you may not give the name. You may not give certain descriptors. But you will say, "Oh my god, he's so cute," and whatever. If you're dating this guy, if you're having sex with this guy, you will talk about his technique. At least I do. You'll talk about his technique. You'll talk about um, what he does that's really special. Right. And in the interest of 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 uh, your own pleasure, it's as Joe said. Yeah, be honest. I don't like that lizard tongue there. Don't do it. You know, whatever. <laughs> and. Sharing with girlfriends is not a bad thing. Well, you know what? I, I, I got I to gotta tell you a great story. This this actually happened to me. So back in um, back in Miami, I have a really nice circle of friends. We all know each other. Guys, girls, we all get together. And one of my girlfriends called me up and she said, you're never going to believe it. I, you know, I had this amazing night with so-and-so. And I was like, wow, that's really great. You know, I'm like, okay, that... I, it's not going anywhere, but I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind exploring a little bit more with him. About a week later, I get a call from my other girlfriend in the same group says, Hey, guess what? I had this great experience with so much ah. nice and fun. And I was like, Oh, um, so, Awkward. so as a, as a courtesy, I didn't tell either girl what was going on, but as a courtesy, I called him up and I said, I, I know this is really inappropriate and it's none of my business, but if you're going to sleep around, try not to sleep around with the same girls in the same circle. Like, it's really inappropriate. And you know what? It's going right. to get everybody. And so, like, you know, just, just just one, even just one at a time, one at different times, yeah. but like not yeah. in the same week. Like, have a, have a little bit of respect for the group because it's going to set everything in turmoil. And it, did, it didn't. It was, you know, everybody was cool about it, but like, you know, um, yeah, I think that, you know, things are going to get out and you know, girls talk and, you know, just be careful. That's right. So, so you right. have to set up your own rules. I think you, listen, you got to have common sense. Like, I know, I know. Yeah. Hey, listen, Joe, i got to interject over here. You say common sense. Not many people have that, okay? It's not so common. That's, that's what that is. I think when, and for both men and women, when your libido gets involved, your common sense goes right out the window. And I get that. But like, you know, then have some common sense afterwards, at least have some common decency afterwards to sort of say, you know, like to just define that or, or have that conversation. But yeah, the common sense is, is not that common and it's worth a lot more than just sense. So uh, do you guys get a lot of offers for friends with benefit? I don't know many offers and not like I wait thing or so, okay? <laughs> How does that <laughs> Go ahead, Sharon. I'll let you take this one first. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. But, um, you know what? <sighs> Generally speaking, guys aren't that evolved, right? So they confuse a hookup with a friend with benefits situation. So, you know, they'll, yeah. And I, I just can't, no, just no. Yeah. <laughs> just no. Wait, wait, you. So okay, for example, you know, some some guy I'm some some guy I've I've met, you know, and um, we've we've become friends. We hang out, you know, watch movies, whatever. And then he goes, he texts me at one a.m. in the morning, want to come over? I'm like, why, right? He goes, you know, on a fuck. I'm like, no, are you nuts? Where did this come from? You know, it's just one example. You know? Not it's not a great example, but you know, in my in my experience, this is what happens. And yeah, <laughs> again, go with clarity, respect, communication. You know, honesty, all of that. It would only work if you were interested, but you're not interested. Yeah. Well, I 
I would have been if you if we were hang out, you know, and things evolved naturally. Because I mean, one of one of the one of the best things this um this guy did told me was that a seduction takes time. A seduction takes time, absolutely. You know, and he said, "No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kiss you even on the first date because I want you to anticipate when I'm gonna kiss you." So like, oh, okay, you know, and it just left me, you know, going thirsting for more. Very clever right. man, you know. Right. But most men don't understand. In my experience, I can't speak for everybody else, of course, but most men that I've met um, fall into into, into very Im- the the impatient category, even with with a bre- with a friend with benefits situation. Um, why don't why don't you just take your time seducing me? And um, why can't I take my time seducing you? Okay, but it gets kind of confusing because if the uh, because I mean I'm just speaking um the here. So if it's just friends with benefits, then a seduction and it's like a real relationship um, should not. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. But the first time, okay, I, I, I clarified. I'm just talking about the first time. You, the first time you become a friend with benefits. Right. You know, you don't just text this person and want him go want to fuck. You know what I mean? You're out of the blue. You don't do that. It's just not on. <laughs> right, I'm not right. do that. Yeah. So, um, Joe, what about you? Um, have you have a lot, have had a lot of offers with friends with benefits? I'm just so interested in the subject. Yeah, you know what? Um, I think that it's it's to d- define a lot. <laughs> I, I I don't mean hundreds, but you know, one, two, one, one is uh, to me, it's it's a lot. Uh, I think, I've had, you know, yeah, I've had many. I've had many, um, and I can say that, um, and I also can say that when I'm approached, like as like. Like somebody, if they, they said to me, hey, I, and I had this experience where, you know, a guy sort of just wanted to hook up and I, I defined it and said, listen, I'm not, I'm, there's a, a saying, it's DTF. Do you know this saying? No. DTF means down to fuck. And. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. And okay. so, yeah. And so like I, my response was, look, I'm not a DTF kind of girl. You know, um, if I'm going to do something casual, it's got to have some kind of level of, of friendship or respect there. So if you, you know, if that's what you're looking for, that's great. And if not, like, I'm not interested. Right. So like, you know, th- that was me stepping up and saying like, Hey, I, I'm not interested in just hooking up. Um, the only way I'm going to do that is if it, it's, it falls under these borders, these guidelines. And if you're interested in that, that's great. And we can go hang out and, and, you know, do some things without the commitment. Um, but otherwise than that, I'm not really interested. Um, so I, yeah, I mean, I've had those experiences where I had to define it. I've had others that have just been like, um, had those ulterior motives about, you know, like wanting to get into a relationship with me and thinking that that would be the way in. Um, you know, I, I've had quite a, a few, um, um, offers in that way that I've, you know, either one. I've, I've taken them up on it, but it, it, it never ends well. <laughs> mm. It never ends well. It never ends, like for them. <laughs> it, it never ends well. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. No, don't be sorry. This is this is amazing. So, any uh, anything else that you want to um, to um, share with us about this friends of uh, friends with benefits? Um, ideas and how to start off and if you want to start with friends of benefit we have already given rules and regulations and you, you can only give some some tips but it's up to you to follow so Sharon um, yeah tell me more man <laughs> <laughs> I would say be safe yeah be safe, safe. Um, yeah practice safe sex uh, if your instincts tell you that this is not going to be a good idea then go with the instincts because no. you can be really good friends, right. but you you kind of know that it's going to go pear shaped if you have sex, then don't. Unless you want to live on the edge and break his heart or have your heart broken, whatever, you know. Then it's, it's your it's, again, it goes back to responsibility, really, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think also to have fun. <laughs> to be safe and have fun. I know it's a contradiction, but no, no, it's possible. It's actually not. Um, I think just the practicing safe sex is, is a must. 
um, I, I totally agree with you. Have fun, yeah. meaning that you also you have the right to enjoy your life and and make make the most out of your own life, uh, but not being taking risks and you know doing stupid stupid stuff like not like seeing safe sex. Um, uh, Joe, um, I I think that I personally really uh, think that. Um, I think friends with benefits is a little bit of a gamble, almost like Russian roulette. I think that if you pull the trigger, you better you better be prepared that you might get the bullet. Um, and and as long as you're okay with knowing that risk, and you like to, to have a little fun, like Sharon's saying, then you know go ahead. But be prepared. Like, don't just you know. And that's the thing. Like a lot of times, friends with benefits happens because we're not really thinking clearly or we're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so like you know but if you're going to engage in it you're really going to do it when you're sober and you and, and and real good thought process you know i think that just remember that there's always the risk of hurting someone or getting yourself hurt in the process so as long as you're okay with that and and you can mitigate those risks then why not just don't hurt yourself or anybody else in the process i think that's the issue no i think for me it's very difficult because most of my friends, my male friends, are male friends. Uh, I don't see, and they're not attractive enough to give me benefits. And they'll drive me insane. <laughs> but that's why they're friends. That's why they're friends. That's why girls have friends, because I don't want to sleep with you. That's why, okay, if you're my friend, it's because I'm not attracted to you, and I don't want to sleep with you. Guys, on the other hand, they're only your friend because they do want to sleep with you, or because they, they feel you maybe... A different note or they fulfill you in a different capacity but they're still a little attracted to you and if and if given the chance they'd probably sleep with you that's the truth that's true ah. that's true that's true what do you think sharon isn't that the truth uh-huh yeah you nailed it joe yeah can't add any more <laughs> to that yeah <laughs> yeah they like they love a lot of your listen Layla, you're you know you're an attractive woman too so all the guys that are you know like hanging out with you as friends and maybe long-term friends there's something to be said about the guys getting something from being with an attractive woman and hanging out with them and they feel like a million bucks. So like, you know, they're getting something yeah. from it. It's not like, you know, that's that part of the attraction, but women don't have those kinds of same. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we, we can hang out with a, a great looking guy and just be his friend and, and think other things about him, but that's not always the driving factor of why we're hanging out with them. Mm -hmm. That's and also, I think for my male friends, they know me too well that, you know, my, my mouth, uh, uh, the way I speak and talk, and I just no filter. They're like, oh, my God, you know, I'd rather you have, I have you as a friend than to speak with you because you probably tell me I'm not good enough for that. There you go. <laughs> okay, so it's been an um, uh, interesting uh, topic. I, I thank you very much. So be before we leave, any, any advice uh, besides... Practice safe sex. Oh, we forgot about Joe. Joe, give uh, advice uh, before uh, for for to have friends with Um, I think it's it's really a lot of what Sharon said. You know, communicate, communicate. You know, be be on and be honest, not just with that person. Be honest with yourself. You know, really figure out what you before you approach that. Like, you know, figure out why you're doing it. Maybe there are, are you're having your own ulterior motives of like just being lonely. Or, you know, like, just maybe you're really wanting a relationship with that person. Um, you know, just, just really, I think, communicate. If you're going to find it, and if you find yourself already past that stage, like, foster the, and nurture that friendship, because that's going to be more important than the fun benefit that you have for uh, a limited capacity. That's very, very wise women. Um, uh, any last words before we shut down, Sharon? Yeah, yeah. If he's married, don't do it. Wow, very smart. Very smart. Very true. Bad karma. <laughs> yeah. Joe? Yeah, you know what? I, I fully back her up on that one. You know, yeah, let's, let's, let's women, like, let's all be good to each other and and yeah, there are plenty of other guys you don't need you know look if you if you didn't find out he was married until afterwards that's one thing but if you know stay away it's just drama mm -hmm. just drama 
But if you're friends, you already know that. No, 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 no. Not talking about that. That's not. You say that if you, you hook up and then you didn't know that he was married, right? So that, that's probably a hookup. So if you're friends from the start and you know he's married, and then it's just friends with benefit, you say don't touch it at all. That's not correct? a friend with benefit. You're having an affair. <laughs> yeah. That's, there you go. That's, <laughs> okay, so we have to um, say goodbye. Thank you, ladies. Uh, it's always a pleasure. I learn a lot more about this subject from you guys than I do by myself and reading papers. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, uh, you Joe, so much. till next time with controversial subjects. Thank you. Th thank you, ladies. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. If you like this show, please share and um, and comment. I know some people are having a hard time to log in. I'm so sorry for, for you, but you can still watch the replay and you can email me with ideas of what you want to talk about or be on my show. Um, my email address is coming up now, live by Lila at email.com. Till next week, goodbye. Have a great weekend. Ta -ta. Bye. See ya. Bye.